Hello. Hello, Jesse. I am here with Mark Cohen, representative of the Pennsylvania House, uh, representing the 202nd District, Philadelphia County, from 1974 to 2016. Uh, thank you very much for being here with me today. I'm very glad to be here. I'd like to start out by asking you about your early life, your childhood, where you grew up. What school did you go to? Well, I, I grew up around uh, Broad and Olney, uh, which, uh, which started out as an overwhelmingly Jewish neighborhood and gradually became a predominantly black neighborhood. Uh, I, I, I went to uh, Tartillas Elementary School. Uh, 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 I'm, so, I'm sorry, I went to uh, Dorothea's Nursery School, Pennell Elementary School, Wagner Junior High School, Central High School, University of Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, later on, after a break, I got a law degree from Wagner University's Law School and uh, Lebanon Valley College and MBA. Uh, uh, growing up, I, uh, I guess I had a, a, a normal life in many ways. You know, uh, I, I remember it was big news on my block when uh, w uh, one of the married women on the block got her own car. I talked about this in my farewell address. People were shocked, the people, little kids, were shocked about this. This violated everything we knew about it. Uh, how marriage worked. You know, it was generally assumed that whatever woman wanted to go, she would get her husband to drive her. I, and uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, we had a park across the street. You know, we, had, uh, uh, we, uh, we had a big driveway in the back, so we had plenty of opportunity uh, 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 to play baseball, to, uh, to play softball, to play uh, a half ball, uh, and uh, and other things. I, uh, a difference in, in my childhood from other people's childhood was uh, the, uh, uh, was the presence of black people in my life. By the time I graduated from Pennell Elementary School, uh, the school was 81 percent black. I. Uh, and I, I you know, I, I, I learned at an early age that, that racial differences can be transcended, that people can talk to each other and be friends, and, uh, and, and, and that fears on the basis of race were generally unfounded. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I, I grew up at a time in which there was great public agitation and great sense that important public questions were being decided. Uh, um, uh, while, I was in, while I was at Panel Elementary School, uh, my mother uh, uh, went to Harrisburg to, uh, to lobbying legislators uh, for fair housing legislation. Uh, I, I, you know, my, uh, my father and mother participated in the march in Washington. Uh, my father uh, I did uh, work in, in, in the South uh, uh, during the summer of 1964 to document uh, d a discrimination against blacks in, in voting there. His research and plenty of other people's research was part of a very large project. Uh, I helped uh, create the Voting Rights Act of 1965. I, you know, I, I, I grew up believing that uh, uh, public issues were important. My family just discussed them at the dinner table. You know, my family was generally against the war in Vietnam. I was against the war in Vietnam. And uh, you know, I, I remember testifying uh, after Hubert Humphrey lost the uh, uh, Democratic National Convention. After Hubert Humphrey won the Democratic nomination, rather, but lost uh, the general election by roughly 100,000 votes nationwide. You know, uh, the uh, uh, Democratic Party uh, held the committee to make changes in, in, the, uh, in, in, in the rules for selecting delegates to the National Convention. I, and uh, my father had signed up to go, but he was unable to go, so I pinch hit for him and, and, and testified. Uh, I, I served on the uh, on Governor Schaefer's Youth Advisory Council. Uh, I was active in numerous activities in high school and the University of Pennsylvania. 
and, and when a vacancy uh, occur, occurred to run for the state legislature, you know, you know I felt I was uh, I, I was qualified to fill it. I had been an intern in Washington for Congressman William Green, who later served as mayor of Philadelphia, for Senator Joseph Clark. I had been on the staff of, of a couple presidential campaigns. Even though I was 24 years old, I looked around the district and I, I saw the governmental experience, the experience in politics, I, I had experience with, uh, with, uh, with community organizations. I was a, I'd been a political science major. I thought I was uh, uh, better qualified than any of the other available candidates. And uh, the, the voters narrowly agreed to that in the, in the Democratic primary. But I, after that, I generally won by very substantial margins. Mm -hmm. Would you say that it was a combination of your environment growing up and your family that shaped you to becoming a Democrat? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it was. You know, my, my father had been a Democratic ward leader. Mm -hmm. He was a Democratic ward leader at the time. Uh, I, 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 I was elected. I, he, uh, uh, he, he had served the term in city council and had run unsuccessfully for city controller and mayor. Uh, you know, our, our family believed that public service was important. And he, my, both my parents had met while working for the federal government during uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt's right. New Deal. My father had, had served in World War II as well. Uh, and then he and my mother had, had, had later uh, held staff positions in a public sector union in New York State. So uh, our family believed my father's biggest achievement was in uh, expanding the Veterans Administration in New York City. He's an advocate. You know, he, he, he helped convince the federal government that, uh, the, that the New York City Veterans Administration was, uh, was way understaffed. And, 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 and they agreed with that. And, and he, he was always proud of that. He would march in every Veterans Day parade until he was in his late 80s. I, I, I grew up believing that politics uh, was important, that government was important, and, 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 and that participating was, uh, was an honorable thing to do. Yeah, good, thank you. Tell me about your first campaign. What some experiences did you have there? Well, the, uh, the biggest experiences were, were uh, getting uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to know uh, Democratic committee people and other activists in the district and, and convincing them that even though I was the youngest candidate in the race, I was the best qualified and would do the most work. And uh, I think when I, when I talked to people, I, I, I showed real knowledge of issues. I, I, I showed real determination to work. I showed a desire to bridge racial gaps in the district. And, and I, I, I think I was the candidate who united substantial numbers of black voters and white voters and, uh, and was able to maintain that through, uh, throughout my career in office. A lot of door-to-door -door knocking on that campaign? There, there was some, not, uh, 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 not as much as is common today. Yeah. A lot of family support helping you oh, yeah. with my, that? Yeah. Uh, my family's support was very helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, people in the community were very helpful. People I'd known from political campaigns were very helpful. It, it, it was a real clear job. But by today's standards, it was a nothing campaign. <laughs> I mean, we raised five thousand dollars in winning. It was by far the top spender in the race. Uh, uh, in my last primary, I spent one hundred seventy-three thousand dollars. <laughs> it was way outspent by my successful opponent. I. Uh, 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 so, you know, we've, we've really changed society in the amount of resources that are put into political campaigns. Well, besides the, uh, the increase of, of, of money, what other kind of changes did you see in campaigning between your first and your last over the years? Uh, Different techniques? Well, uh, there's a greater emphasis on professionals. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a greater emphasis on, uh, on negativity. Mm. I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I, uh, there's, uh, there's a much greater cynicism among the voters. 
in, 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 uh, to say in 1974 that you really want to use the power of the job to help people. Yeah. That was a credible statement then. Uh, today, among many people, that's not a credible statement. And the, and, and the rise of cynicism is a major obstacle towards, uh, towards political communication. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it just creates a very, very difficult obstacle to overcome. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy campaigning? Yes, I did. Yeah. And we got to know all sorts of people in my first campaign. I got to meet a, I, I got to meet a veteran of the Spanish-American War. Oh my! I, uh, 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 nowadays, of course, all the, all, all those veterans have passed away. All the all the veterans from World War One have passed away, and the vast majority of the World War Two veterans have right. passed away. <clears throat> but uh, you know, it, 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 it was enjoyable. It was engaging, and. And I feel uh, yeah, uh, good about the opportunities to meet people in all my campaigns. Nice. Tell me about the 202nd district, both in geography and constituent makeup. Well, the 202nd district has gradually migrated out of the original, out of its original boundaries. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the the big mega fact is, is that the black population in Philadelphia. Has gone from being con heavily concentrated, where where, uh, where one household often had three generations, because of a sh because of a real shortage of housing, uh, the blacks could e either get because of discrimination, or uh, or, or afford. You know, uh, uh, the black uh, population has been has been normalized now. Is in the case with. <coughs> Uh, of white people, one, one generation families are quite common, right. two generation families are common, and three generation families are very rare. I, uh, I, and, and that has meant, in practical terms, that the, this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the black, that the land area for black districts has to keep expanding. And, and because because of the one man one vote decision, so uh, what's uh, gradually happened as, re as a result of that is my district has changed, and uh, the, there's some people from the original district in my current legislative district, uh, but, uh, uh, but but the land area is is totally different okay. uh, uh, than it was originally, and and, and the uh, four to three. Uh, a decision of the uh, Pennsylvania State Supreme Court uh, throwing out the re redistricting plan that the Legislative Redistricting Commission uh, uh, had agreed to uh, probably uh, uh, was a major factor in my defeat uh, for re-election in, in, in 2016. The uh, district lines uh, of the district that had originally been, been agreed to at least had some Reasonable resemblance to the old district, although it had many changes in it. Uh, the, uh, the new uh, the new boundaries totally eliminated my original district, and totally eliminated much of the district I had represented throughout the years. And, and, and what that led to was not a huge popular outcry against me, but it led to a massive flooding of special interest dollars in, into the race to defeat me, as soon as it was perceived that I was vulnerable. Were there certain issues that you would say were unique to your district, to the people of your district? I, I, I don't know if there are any unique issues in my district. I mean, I think early in my legislative tenure, I, you know, there was an effort to move Central High School, okay. uh, which was a top academic high school, uh, out of the district. And the, on the ground that its location uh, uh, was, uh, was a detriment uh, uh, to the future of the school. The school was a, uh, was a highly rated academic high school, and, and the feeling was it would be much better if it was placed in a more upscale neighborhood. And, and I strongly oppose that. Okay. And, and the community did, and the, and the advocates backed down. Uh, I, 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 I guess that was a, a, a unique legislative issue. 
but uh, 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 generally speaking, the issues are, are the same. People, you know, people want educational opportunity. They want they want jobs. They want economic opportunities. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they want their lives being lived with dignity. They want government help for uh, for programs. And uh, you know, I, I spent my uh, legislative career uh, trying to shape state government to be more responsive to them. You were one of the first representatives to have a district office. Yeah, I, I was the guy who initiated district offices for, uh, for House members. That was the uh, a, 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 as a policy. I mean, it took it took three votes and three successive years, and and the second year we did better than the first year. Third year it narrowly passed by a vote of 95 to 90, oh. and and then the, and then they came up with a compromise of uh, of we can have one district staffer, but the staffer has to work out of their home. <laughs> they can't have an office. Well, that obviously had you know had problems, and there's a little practical way to supervise other than phone calls and personal visits, but. Uh, 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 but eventually, uh, uh, that got changed, and district offices were established, and, and, and the district offices were expanded from one to much more than one. Right. And, and I, uh, the, the, the time, uh, as I leave office, uh, I, I, have t I have two offices and si uh, six district staff people, and the, they do an awful lot. We've gone from just somebody who helps with complaints to people who play a major role, you know. In, in, in servicing the community and organizing events and in, in, in helping the needy. Uh, uh, we, uh, my office has collected f uh, food and clothing right. and, uh, and we hand it out. We're active in the direct provision of governmental services occasionally. We've helped. Uh, we, uh, we had a temporary football league set up for, uh, 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 for a little bit. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, we helped organize business associations on, uh, on uh, Castor Avenue and uh, Rising Sun Avenue. Uh, our office has made a real difference in, in the lives of many people. So I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of, of having led the effort to, to set them up. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, the uh, senior partner in the law firm. Uh, uh, where I now work part time. He, he, he was in the legislature for one term. Mm. He, he was in the Senate from 1970 to 74, Bob Rovner. And uh, he, he told me he, he wanted this real office too, and he couldn't get approval, so he had a fundraiser to, uh, uh, to, to set up a district office. But I, I thought the government could, could pay for it and should pay for it. It was a legitimate governmental function. Sure. And, uh, the, and, and Pennsylvania still is one of the minority of states 40 years later that has district offices. Online. Most states don't. Obviously a positive thing. I, I, I think it was a very positive thing and it made the legislature um, much more representative of the public. Good. What was your relationship like with the media both here in Harrisburg and in your district? And has it changed over the years? Well, it, you know, it, it's different if you represent an urban district and if you represent a rural district. Okay. We don't really have media that's focused on us. You know, Philadelphia media has a media market with about 70 state representatives. Right. And, and uh, one quarter of that number in the states, in, in the state senate. You know, plus you have city council and local councils. Mm -hmm. Uh, around the tri-state area, uh, so there's very little, uh, 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 there's really very little media coverage. It's, v v it's very, very difficult to get it. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, different legislators have different opinions about whether this is uh, good or not. Kathy Mandarino once enthusiastically said, "This is much better than having the, the constant media coverage that you get in the in the, in the rural areas, where, where there might be one legislator and one television station, and one newspaper, and you know, because you know, you're not subject to microscopic scrutiny. On, on the other hand, it's very difficult to, to get across 
Okay. What, what, what you stand for? I mean, to uh, to uh, to get a uh, story about a bill in, in the paper requires a massive effort to sell them on the, uh, on the value of the story, and then they feel well they can't have a story. Cohen does good things, so they uh, you know, so so they thoroughly investigate the problem. They have you know. You know, four or five experts on uh -huh. what it, uh, on, on what a serious problem this is, and uh, you know, and then and then they have me as an advocate of it, and then they have other advocates, and then they have opponents of it, and so what you have is a very very balanced story that takes an enormous time to get a mountain approved. It could easily take 20, 30, 40, 50 hours to get that of work wow. to get that story in the paper, and you wind up being mentioned in one or two paragraphs. <laughs> On, uh, on the uh, on the back page of the, of the paper, right. and nobody in your life will ever admit that they read the story. And uh, so, it, uh, so it, it serves kind of as a disincentive mm -hmm. to uh, 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 to do it because it just takes so much work when work when you when you have so many other things to do. Right. Uh, so it would be kind of nice if, if, if there was real coverage of what we were doing. You know, if it was considered news when we introduced the bill, if it was considered news when we spoke on the floor, if it was considered news when we got the bill passed, mm -hmm. that, would, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that would be helpful and that would create much more dialogue nice. uh, uh, between legislators and the press. Okay. You first started in 1974, as we yes. mentioned. Uh, what were your, some of your first impressions of the Capitol building, the House chamber, uh, swearing yeah, in ceremonies? I think the House chamber was, was, is and was a very beautiful thing. It's, it, it's wonderful to be able to work in such surroundings. Uh, you know, the, the most important thing I gained from coming here was a much higher impression of the, of the legislators. Okay. Uh, than I had been led to believe in, in the newspapers. You know, I read zillions of newspaper editorials telling about what a uh, what a terrible place this was, and you know, and, you know how, how how bad all the legislators were. And what I found instead was a lot of very engaged, very dedicated people uh, who, 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 were do, who were doing their best to uh, uh, to actively solve problems and all sorts of very valuable insights. Based on based on life experiences mm -hmm. and uh, interaction with constituents, and uh, he, 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 you know, they were full of both wisdom as to, as to how you advance legislation in the legislative process, how you deal with the governor's office, how you de how you deal with political problems. Uh, uh, one uh, uh, one rural legislator des described being a state legislator. Uh, it's like riding a horse. He said, "There's, uh, 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 there's never a horse that can't be rode," and referring to a district, and, and there's never a rider that can't be thrown. <laughs> and uh, you know, there's an awful lot of homespun wisdom okay. here, and, and, and there was a, a much greater f friendliness across the aisle uh, than there was then. Yet, you know, people had opposition roles. Uh, Pennsylvania is, then is now is considered one of the more partisan uh, legislatures, but uh, you know, people joked about the roles. Bob Butera, the Republican leader, introduced himself to me and said, "Hi, I'm the bad guy." I, uh, you know, the, you know, there was a, uh, uh, there was a, a greater sense of collegiality than there is now. Now it takes a lot more work. To, uh, 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 to create that. I, I, I saw uh, early this morning there was a poll taken about, about whether people favored Republicans and Democrats being friends. And, and, and in 2010, about 70 percent of the people or so favored it. And today, only a little over half of the people favor it. Now, there's just, you know, it was just ex accepted then. Right. The, uh, the people would work together in a friendly and collegial manner, and they would try to solve problems. And, and that the uh, the goal was to deal with problems, not to deny their existence. And to, and it, it, it was a it was on the whole a very positive environment, and 
and the, the environment. I, when, I, when, I, when I got here, I had no idea how long I would stay. I never dreamed I would set a record and serve 42 and a half <laughs> years here. But, uh, but it was the positive I I experiences I had okay. in the early years and thereafter that uh, reinforced my desire uh, uh, to stick around. Did you have any mentors those first couple years? Well, we, uh, we, we had no shortage of mentors. You know, the, uh, virtually the whole house, it's, it, it seemed. Uh, you know, the, uh, the people I associated with, sure. uh, with at least, uh, uh, were, uh, uh, were willing to offer helpful advice and, uh, and, and to show uh, uh, Herbert Feynman, Le Le Leroy Arvis, uh, 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 later Jim Mandarino, okay. uh, all, all were mentors. All, 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 all those three had a, had a great interest in having a statewide Democratic majority mm -hmm. and, and, and having a statewide record of achievement. And uh, the uh, uh, rep uh, Republican leader, Bob Butera, Matt Ryan, later Sam Hayes, you know, also had, had statewide public policy objectives, but, and, and they believe that uh, there should be some, deg uh, some degree of bipartisan cooperation to achieve them. Uh, so uh, so it, 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 was a, it, it was a very positive environment. Uh, yeah, uh, starting and you know, and, and younger people came along and they were very positive. Bill DeWeese came along and he was full, he was full of great enthusiasm uh, for for collegiality and yeah, you know, he thought legislators ought to, ought to meet together more. Uh, Alan Kukovich uh, 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 brought new energy in the, in terms of liberal public policy goals. Ron Cowell was uh, uh, very passionate on education. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, ethics, and, uh, and and good government. Uh, Joe Rhodes was there when I was sworn in. was a uh, was a leader in, in improving our criminal justice system okay. at, at all levels. Uh, you know, you, uh, you had the uh, uh, people at, at the top uh, being very interested. In, uh, in moving Pennsylvania along and involving young legislators in the process, and young legislators with a strong sense of public purpose. Uh, 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 David Richardson uh, 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 could, be, uh, uh, could be rough and, and uh, angry at times, but, I, uh, 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 but he had a, a, an enormously strong uh, a sense of public purpose. Uh, and, and, and increasingly, as he got uh, older and more experienced, you know, he, 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 he searched for ways to convey that sense of public purpose into the legislation of the state. Uh, uh, so I, 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 I thought the environment was very good. And that, you know, maybe, you know, you know, they say older people are nostalgic and, and uh, I think the old days are better than the current days. But, uh, uh, but I think that the engagement was much greater okay. than, uh, than it is today. You know, we had, uh, 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 we had many more public hearings than we used to have. Uh, uh, the caucuses lasted longer and discussed, it, and discussed bills in, in, in greater detail. It, it wasn't just about processing legislation. Uh, it, 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 it was about improving society, and I think there was there was an enormous amount of sincerity there uh, uh, that people uh, people were very obvious about, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, uh, 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 there was less of the okay, we've got we've got an hour, let's let's cram as much work as we can as, as we can do in the hour we have. Uh, the, uh, there was. A sense that we don't really want arbitrary time limits. You know, we uh, legislative sessions could go on until two, three, four at night. Occasionally, even five or six at night. I, uh, uh, committee hearings could stay, uh, could start at ten o'clock in the morning and go on until four, five, six at night. I mean, uh, uh, people worked long hours and 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 thought that, and, and thought the work was worthwhile. What was the office setting like those early years? Did you share an office with someone? Yeah, yeah. We uh, I, initially, I, initially, I was 
part of a large office. I, 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 my desk was abutted the desk of Bill Lincoln, who uh, later became the Democratic leader in the state Senate. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty crowded. And then <laughs> after, uh, after that, after sharing the large office with Bill Lincoln and others, I got to have another office with, uh, with two other people. Uh, 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 maybe just one other person, Anthony DiDonato, uh, uh, yeah, uh, comes to mind, and, uh, and and then eventually we got uh, we got our own offices, nice. and, and and we and we only had uh, I, you know, we limited phone contact with people. You know, we. Uh, and we generally shared the services of a sec uh, secretary. That's right. And uh, you know, it was a big deal to have a Watts line in your office. For some reason, I had, I had a Watts line in, in my office, and Joe Rhodes was a little more senior than I. Didn't have a Watts line in his <laughs> office, so he would come over and use my Watts line. Why I got the Watts line, he didn't. I, I have no idea. But I, uh, 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 the Watts line was needed to. Uh, uh, to make uh, uh, calls outside of the Harrisburg area. Uh, so, so gradually we moved from, uh, from a legislature that we, uh, there had very little capability of doing anything. Even, even a few years before I got there, getting a letter out was a, was a very difficult thing. The general assumption was that people had some other, uh, some kind of job where they had secretarial support on that job. And, and, that's, and, 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 and that's where you handle office. And there is obvious conflict of interest. You know, you know say, oh, come into my office or uh, 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 come into my insurance office or real estate office. Now, there's obviously uh, uh, pressure on people to use, to use the legislator's private services. And, and it wasn't good from a conflict of interest point of view, and it wasn't, it wasn't good from an efficiency point of view. If a legislator is busy selling real estate or selling insurance or, or, or practicing law, you know, they're, uh, they're not busy doing the job of a state legislator. And many people realize that, and that was a factor in the creation of, of district offices. It was a, it was a factor in, in the expansion of legislative staff. Uh, uh, people wanted uh, the, uh, people in the legislature and outside the legislature wanted the legislature to be more competent, more effective, and the, and, and the legislature did over time become more competent and, and, and effective. When I was the uh, chairman of the Public Utilities Subcommittee, uh, we, uh, we talked about how the uh, how the PUC, and this was in, in the in the mid 1970s had no consumer uh, voice in it. And uh, uh, Herbert Denenberg had been appointed to the PUC. He was a great consumer advocate. And he said he wanted to get the PU out of the PUC. <laughs> and and, and you know, people, did, people thought that was a pejorative way to, a way to characterize the PUC. But, uh, you know, but w w we put substance on that. We, got the PUC in the business of protecting consumers, which it had never been before. It only, it only dealt with rate, rate increases, not consumer problems. Uh, 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 the Consumer Affairs uh, Committee generally, which I was the vice chairman and uh, uh, chair of the PUC uh, subcommittee, I, uh, I uh, repealed the fair trade bills, which set minimum prices, mm -hmm. uh, 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 and o o often set prices far above market value, what people could get in other states. So, I in 1974 dollars, which is uh, pro uh, probably about uh, 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 seven times as much in today's dollars. You know, we estimated based on statistics available that we were saving the average family fifty dollars a year by getting rid of the uh, 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 of the fair trade laws. Now, probably we're saving three hundred fifty to four hundred dollars a year in today's dollars. 
uh, uh, with, uh, with, with Joe Rhodes leading the uh, uh, Criminal Justice Subcommittee. Uh, uh, we made major strides in improving police community relations and expanding uh, uh, the reach of law enforcement. We, all, uh, we legalized wiretapping in Pennsylvania had been abolished because of abuses. Right. Before, we, we established statewide grand juries. We made the, uh, the, the Attorney General active office. We, we worked on improving police community relations, an issue which is still of importance today. Uh, we, we did things. And we, we, spent, we spent time together as a legislature. We spent time together in the Democratic caucus and, 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 and the Republican caucus. And uh, he, uh, we, we made a difference in society. And I, I, I worked throughout my uh, uh, a legislative career in legislation that made a difference. We had experience early uh, uh, getting stuff done. I, I, I kept my eye out for, for worthwhile ideas, and I tried very hard to uh, 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 generate worthwhile ideas myself. Uh, but I, I was an early co-sponsor of, of legislation setting up the PACE program. Mm -hmm. for subsidized uh, uh, prescriptions for senior citizens. I, 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 I was an early co-sponsor of legislation setting up the home uh, emergency mortgage assistance program, which, uh, which, uh, which is law in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the only state that has such a program, mm. although, the, although the federal government uh, had such a program briefly using Pennsylvania as a model uh, in 2009, 2010, uh, when there was a need for economic stimulus. I, uh, I, I, I pushed uh, 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 legislation to uh, create a chemical right to know in, in, yes. in, in the 1980s so that p workers and communities would know the dangerous chemicals uh, they might be exposed to, and he, he, and the management would also know if we put in the strongest management right to know legislation of any right. uh, uh, of any state in the country, because for some reason uh, the chemical company said, well, how about just telling the workers and not telling the management? And that seemed to me the dumbest idea <laughs> ever. I mean, why shouldn't the management know about sure. uh, uh, what uh, 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 what uh, uh, what they and the workers were exposed to? So we wrote in very strong legislative supervision guaranteeing management the right to know as well. Uh, and, and then the, I don't think this was the first right to know legislation that passed in Pennsylvania, but it was the most prominent. And then, and then uh, later on, it was very active in, in the uh, uh, 2007, 2008 session in creating a governmental information right to know. Mm -hmm. And, and when we set up a governmental agency to enforce it, and that was my idea originally, which everybody ultimately agreed to. I said, if you, if you don't have a government agency to enforce this, nothing's going to happen. And, uh, and Pennsylvania's got the strongest governmental agency uh, to uh, in, in enforcing the governmental right to no law of any, of any state in the country. Uh, uh, so I, I, I've been very active. Uh, you know, I, I, I helped set up the uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the organ transplant program in yes. Pennsylvania. You know, uh, Mike DeWita had originally introduced it in the Senate. Mike was gung ho about it. And he had he had a, uh, a, a an organ transplant organization in his district, and he was gung ho. But he was unable to get it out of the Senate, largely because largely because the, the Democrats were a minority in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So then I introduced his legislation in the House, and we were in the, in the majority then, and the House passed it, and the Senate went along with it. We built up, uh, uh, we built up strength, and uh, he, uh, you know, we, I, I, I pushed the minimum wage legislation, in, uh, which passed in 19, 1988. I tried to get it higher than we actually succeeded in doing. Uh, I, th I think I wanted to raise it to five dollars and twenty-five cents, and instead we raised it from three thirty-five to uh, three eighty, uh, which was which was still enough to lead to a major study on the comparison of the minimum wage in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and and, and the study showed 
And people said that higher minimum wages create unemployment. You know, so that was the standard view of the economics profession. And then some economists from uh, the site will compare unemployment in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. New Jersey didn't pass the minimum wage, and Pennsylvania did. Surely the unemployment in Pennsylvania should, uh, uh, should go up as a result of the minimum wage right. increase. And, and, and to their surprise, unemployment in New Jersey went up, unemployment in Pennsylvania went down after, the, after we passed the minimum wage, because a higher minimum wage, even a, even a slightly higher minimum wage, meant that jobs were filled faster. And, and so, uh, so and the main source of, uh, uh, of unemployment is, uh, is there's vacancies that workers can't, the employers can't get workers to fill because the salaries are too low. Mm -hmm. Well, so, uh, so, so, that, uh, so that minimum wage uh, had an increase wound up because of the study. It got a lot of uh, uh, attention, uh, being very influential in, in increasing minimum wages around the country. You know, in uh, in, uh, in in 2006, I led the effort, successful efforts to raise Pennsylvania's minimum wage to 7.15, and then the federal government threw in another dime to 7.25 when they when they created a national right. minimum wage in the Obama administration. I've tried unsuccessfully to raise it since. But, uh, but all, all over the country, the minimum wage is much higher than it is in yeah. Pennsylvania, and that has to be influencing uh, employers and making employment decisions in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't see how, even with Republican majorities in both houses, they can indefinitely hold out as the minimum wage is skyrocketing all, all over the country. It's, uh, it, it's on path to $15 in both New York and California as well as the District of Columbia. Many more states are, are, are heading in that direction. Chicago is a minimum wage of 1350. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, you know, I, I, I think it's clear that minimum wages all over the country are going to be got, going up in the years to come, and then that's going to be putting a lot of pressure on Pennsylvania. And I'm, I'm very proud of my, uh, of my efforts in, in that area. When I first introduced it in Pennsylvania, you know, people argued with me, said, the state has no power to raise the minimum wage. It's only the federal government. But I had done a lot of research. Said, no, that's not true. Massachusetts started uh, the minimum wage in, in 1912. And, uh, I, uh, and other states followed. You know, there were about half dozen, dozen states in, in America that had a higher minimum wage when the, when the federal government raised the minimum wage. It was the successful efforts in states to raise the minimum wage. That I uh, that forced it. And that wasn't just knowledge, you know, you, you accumulated by walking down the street. It was knowledge that was a result of research. You know, I, I, I learned that research was, uh, I was, uh, I was very, very important because it made a difference in terms of determining what was possible and what wasn't. Well, issues like raising minimum wage uh, and, and some of the other issues that, that we'll discuss in a moment. The process of introducing legislation for that, you individually, how, what is your process for that? Do you look at your district first and say this looks like it's a topic that is statewide and should be addressed, or do you look at Pennsylvania as a whole uh, and say I need to, to, to focus my attention well, on Pennsylvania? Well, what, what I do is I, is, I, is I ask the question of how do I improve people in my district and statewide? I, I don't think there's a, a big discrepancy here. If, if something benefits uh, the people in my district, it probably benefits a lot of other people. Of course. The fact is that the wages in Philadelphia are higher, and that the big, the, uh, 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 the big gainer in terms of number of percent, in terms of the percentage of the people, mm -hmm. is the rural areas and not the, and not the urban areas. Right. They have a much higher percentage of people working at the minimum wage than we do in Philadelphia. Uh, uh, but, you know, but, but it clearly benefits large numbers of my constituents, and uh, it, uh, it, 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 it took a poll in, in my district in 2014 and found minimum, raising the minimum wage was the third most popular issue in, in, in my district. But uh, you know, you, you go down the street in my district and, and say, "What are the major problems in, 
uh, think, thinking of statewide legislation is not something that a lot of my constituents do sure. on a regular basis. And there's a problem in the whole interest group structure here. You know, you go to loads and loads of perceptions of this interest group and that in interest group, and it's a very, very rare. I represent a heavily blue-collar district, heavily minority district, and I have to say it's extraordinarily rare when I meet a constituent at any of these sessions. They say, we're the people. Well, that's fine, but they, but, but they don't really include the people of my district. Right. And, uh, you know, it's very, I, I, I would say in an average legislative session of all interest groups combined, uh, including interest groups that uh, 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 really make efforts to try to reach out and, and get, get people, you know, you know, maybe a dozen or so constituents of mine come to Harrisburg. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and, and that's almost exclusively among labor unions. I, you, know, you, you go to professional groups or the business groups, and my constituency is virtually totally un, unrepresented. And uh, so I, 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 I just am, am aware that, 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 that the people aren't really plugged into the legislative process. And, it's, and, and they don't have strong advocates mm -hmm. up here. The advocacy process, there's no such thing as a, uh, as a lobby, and there's never been such a thing as a lobby for any civil rights organization in Harrisburg. There's not been any such thing as a, as a, as a lobby for any predominantly black organization except, except some union locals okay. are predominantly black. But other, other than that, uh, and, 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 and there's no such thing as a lobby really working for the white working class other, other than labor, which represents a, only a percentage of them. So, so as time went on, incre I increasingly felt that it, it was my role to, to try to generate proposals that would benefit them mm -hmm. because, because the lobbying system fundamentally did not include them. And I was uh, persuaded it didn't include them when, I, when you know, I'd go to reception after reception where there are hundreds of people and not a single one was from my district. Mm -hmm. I, uh, so, I, uh, so, uh, so I've been active, so I've been very responsive to ideas of others and I've tried to uh, uh, generate ideas myself uh, as to what could benefit my constituents. One thing, uh, my, my most recent major achievement was medical marijuana. Yes. I was the first one to introduce medical marijuana in decades uh, I, in, uh, in uh, 2009. And seven years after I introduced it, we, we, we got a form of the legislation into law. And so far, the only thing that's taken effect as we're talking is that people have a right to get marijuana for medical purpose anywhere in the world where it's not legal. If you get it legally anywhere in the world, and, and, you, and you can get it legally in many parts of the world, uh, in, in, including New, New Jersey, District of Columbia, all of Canada, uh, I, I, if, you, if you get it anywhere legally, you, you, can, you can use it in Pennsylvania. Uh, but you know, uh, by 2018, we ought to have a system of, of, uh, of processing and distribution in Pennsylvania, so that, uh, so that people can uh, uh, use it with, with doctor's approval uh, 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 whenever they want. Um. You had mentioned organ donation and yes. medical marijuana as well. A number of medically related issues um, were on your table for a number of years, including yeah. the ones we mentioned, as well as as um, you had opposed restrictions on abortion rights. Right, um, and, and, and I and, and I supported uh, doctors uh, uh, when doctors were complaining about high uh, me, uh, medical malpractice costs. Mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, somebody uh, came up with, yeah, and they say that the, w the way to solve the problems are, are, are to stop people who are injured from suing them. Right. And that, w and that solved one problem, but created another problem 
of, of, of people uh, 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 being crippled as a result of medical errors and not having it. And, and any recourse. So because the medical malpractice, so, so somebody came up with the, some Republican uh, came up with the idea of let's raise the cigarette tax by two percent, by two cents, mm -hmm. and, and, and subsidize medical malpractice premiums. And I, 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 I believe I was the first Democrat, or certainly one of the first Democrats, to say this is a great idea, let's do it. And, 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 and so we, uh, uh, and so for a five-year period, when, when, until the medical malpractice rates fell to much more normal levels, much more affordable levels, the state was, 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 was helping keep doctors here by subsidizing medical malpractice insurance. And we were, you know, guaranteeing that doctors had, had to meet uh, uh, high standards to avoid being sued. It was still better to avoid being sued. Uh, uh, but, you know, we showed responses. I, and I, I, I think we need a healthy Pennsylvania. And uh, I, I, I've sought for practical, I, I was very active in, 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 in encouraging Governor Corbett to, uh, uh, to buy into the, the Obama administration's Medicaid expansion. And I was, and I, and I worked with Community Legal Services in Philadelphia. Uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to slow down approval through a lawsuit of the uh, Corbett compromise offer, which gave s some Medicaid expansion, but not what the federal government wanted. And the federal government was willing to accept this better than nothing, but I thought it would, once Corbett was leaving office, I didn't want him trying to use his lame duck power to Mm -hmm. Established this into law uh, when it clearly was inadequate to, to meet people's objectives. I'm pleased that we we succeeded, and it got, uh, uh, the, the court did slow uh, uh, Governor Corbett down in, in trying to enshrine his uh, policy into law through contracts with vendors and, and other methods. And Governor Wolf faced in control. Yeah. Of it in the uh, and, 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 and it worked very well. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I would hope that the Medicaid expansion would not be reversed in the Trump administration. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. It's a state federal program, and they certainly can reverse it if they want to. Yeah. Somewhat early on in your your legislative career, um, welfare reform was a was a very large issue. Um, were you involved with a lot of the? Uh, the discussions and, and, and legislation that was introduced? Yes. Uh, uh, in, in my general position was that I was against the welfare reform okay. that was advocated. You know, it, it, people wanted to restructure the system and, and make it more humane and less bureaucratic. I, I would favor that. If people wanted to try to uh, move welfare recipients, uh, into jobs, I was in favor of that. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, but I, I was not in favor of just cutting off welfare and saying, "Well, now the people are going to be forced to take jobs." Because, while undoubtedly there are some people who re reacted to the welfare cuts with a new determination to work and achieve some degree of success, many many people just starved. Yeah. That's basically what happened. And, uh, and, and decades later, I am dealing with that as a, as a legislator, as we're shutting down my legislative office. Uh, we are uh, uh, you know, working on uh, a, a, a dispo uh, disposing excess food mm. and clothes, but, uh, but there is massive poverty there, and, and, and there's always been massive poverty among black people, but there is now massive poverty among many white working class yeah. people. And our, uh, you know, and I, I, we put out clothes outside the office, which people could just take, oh. and some people said we were degrading the neighborhood. But the fact is, we large numbers of people were benefiting from that, 
and the people who benefited from it in an integrated neighborhood were largely white. And this was, the, the, the welfare cuts were, uh, 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 were overdone and inhumane. And uh, I, I think that there ought to be efforts in the future to, uh, to, uh, to restore those cuts. I've commented on that both in my farewell address to the House and in, and, and in my remarks when, uh, when I was honored for breaking the record for longest service in the, in the House. This cannot be something that we are proud of. The whole legitimacy of government, going back to biblical times, is based on, our, on government taking care of the poor. And we are just abdicating that responsibility when we cut welfare. Some people really need welfare. And uh, uh, just setting arbitrary tests uh, of, uh, you know, of, of what your age is and whether there's a theoretical possibility of you, of you working uh, is, is unfair. Some people, are, more and more people are getting it because the federal government under Obama basically tried to get around the welfare crisis by expanding eligibility. For, uh, uh, for Social Security disability. There are far more people on Social, serv social Security disability than there have ever been. And I, I you know, especially mental illness, Social Security disability, and people now have to, if, if, people, if people can fit their problems into some physical or mental disability, uh, 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 they can now get Social Security disability and, and their, and, and their 50s, uh, and that's, that's one way around it. But, but there are many people who do not have a disability and, 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 and just need money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we ought to provide it, and, and it may be cheaper from a federal point of view than the Social Security Disability Program. But the Social Security Disability Program is what the Obama administration had the legal ability to run and uh, yeah, uh, on, the welf uh, on welfare, their hands were tied because of welfare cuts. Right. Another social issue um, that came up was, uh, that you were involved with, was protecting the rights of LGBT community in, uh, in the greater Philadelphia area and across the state. Yeah. How did you get involved in that? Well, uh, I was conscious of that because my, uh, my sister is gay. And so I'm aware that uh, I, I, gays, lesbians, transgender people have, I have problems. It just seemed that this is something the state could do that doesn't cost any money and probably generates money because if people can work, uh, they're supporting themselves and they're paying taxes, supporting everybody else. And, and it seemed to me we want as high a percentage of the, of the population in the workforce as possible. And we ought to identify areas where, uh, uh, where people are being unjustly kept out of the workforce. Uh, I, I, was, I, I was pleased that we uh, helped create public space for Governor Corbett to uh, back down on marriage equality after the federal court uh, uh, ruled in, in, in favor of the gays and lesbians who want to get married. Right. Uh, uh, Governor Christie also helped create public space for it by, after losing one round in court, saying, okay, we've tried, we've lost, let's move on. And uh, I, I got Governor Corbett followed uh, that lead. But Senator Leach, who I served with in the House be, before he was in the Senate, I and others uh, took opportunities to uh, speak at, at rallies and to generally demonstrate that there was widespread public support uh, 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 for, the, uh, for the rights of same-sex couples who were in love to get married. And, and, and I think, you know, you, know, you know, Corbett saw the rallies, he took polls, you know, you know public opinion was overwhelmingly on our side. Yeah. And he said, why are we wasting, you know, after spending some money on this, I think, they spent about $500,000 oppo uh, opposing it in federal court. But after they lost, he said, okay, we, he followed Governor Christie, we tried, we lost, 
we're not, we're not, we're not going to appeal it anymore. Let's move on. So, uh, so, so that was a victory. We speeded up as a result of successfully uh, pressuring Governor Corbett. And we, we speeded up the process by one year in Pennsylvania. Huh. Ult ultimately, it became law in the entire country. Uh, w one thing I did, going back to welfare, yes. w uh, one of my rare actual achievements, other than just opposing the stuff, you know, generally we, we lost the battles. Uh, but w one of my rare achievements, and one of Dave Richardson's rare achievements, we both worked uh, uh, together closely on this, was uh, getting rid of the requirement uh, uh, that middle class people who had gotten welfare at some point in their lives and owned a home had had to repay the state for the welfare they had gotten. And the state would put a lien on the house they owned. As a practical matter, you know, the people who are off welfare were generally speaking not making a huge fortune and uh, they found it impossible to pay off the money. And so it became, so the lien stayed, and then they said, let's get a, let's get a home repair loan. Uh, or, and they couldn't get a home repair loan or other personal loans uh, because they had, because uh, uh, they had the lien against their house. And so that was a factor in neighborhood decay. Uh, and, and so Richardson and I uh, worked hard and uh, uh, we persuaded uh, the members of the House and the Senate to, uh, uh, to repeal the welfare lien law. And by the time we had done it, the vast majority of other states had already done it. So this wasn't very courageous of, uh, of us, but uh, you know, it was a worthwhile uh, a benefit for middle class homeowners. And I discovered the flex, and we had a lot of Democratic members of our caucus who wanted to cut welfare. And they wanted to use the, the bill on welfare liens as a way to insert welfare cuts in them. And, and virtually the whole Republican Party wanted to cut welfare. And we had a small Democratic majority. And so I called the meeting of the welfare, uh, of, the, of the people who wanted to cut welfare. And I said, look, we got a problem. This is good legislation. If you Christmas tree, just take a whole lot of amendments in this cutting off, you're going to kill the whole thing. You're going to kill the whole thing. So what I would hope is you all are passionately committed to cutting welfare, mm -hmm. but if you could vote, when we have loads of amendments cutting welfare that you can vote for. But I'd really appreciate it if you would vote for different amendments and not all vote for the same amendments. So we could have a clean bill. Yeah. That goes, that goes to the Senate and goes to the governor. And uh, I was a Democratic whip then in charge of vote getting, and I persuaded them all. They looked at the board, they all voted for numerous amendments, but they all voted for different amendments, and, uh, and, and, and we were able to pass the, uh, 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 the lean bill. In, in, in a form that the Senate would accept it, and Governor Casey would sign it. And uh, yeah, I, I'm very proud of the work that Representative Richardson and I did in that. Uh, the, uh, uh, abandoned homes were far less of a problem in Philadelphia and elsewhere around the state because of that. Another issue that came up was workers' compensation. And, uh, and trying to reform that. Did you see it as a problem, the, the, the entire system? Yeah, I saw it, I, I saw it as a whole series of, uh, 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 of problems. Okay. You know, business said, well, the problem is the premiums are too high. But one reason the premiums were too high is because there was a great deal of uncertainty in the system because the cases dragged on and on and on. Right. And, uh, and one reason the cases dragged on and on and on was because the rules were extremely complex. And, and another reason the, uh, uh, the, ca the case is dragged on and on and on was that the judges uh, 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 were not lawyers and they were easily confused by legal motions. And, uh, <coughs> and, and, and the, you know, 
some one side or another would ha have a lawyer and they'd file some complex legal motion and the judge would say gee I got to study this for a long time and figure, and figure this out and that slowed it and, and, and that slowed the process down and uh, so, uh, so we ultimately changed the law requiring that the worker changing the workers compensation referees to workers compensation judges expanding the number of, uh, uh, of people from get about 57 referees as I recall we've got now at least 93 workers compensation judges uh, and, and, and we had a, had a committee that simplified the rules so that uh, cases w uh, uh, can go faster and, and, and so that was some influence in, 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 so, so these were all changes that worked to reduce uncertainty and cut costs uh, that's what I was willing to do uh, eventually the uh, legislature uh, became heavily Republican and uh, they and, and they made further changes over my objections cutting the benefits which I did not want to do uh, but uh, you know, uh, but I'm pleased that I made po real positive changes in the workers comp system good over the years you served on a number of standing committees labor relations uh, human services state government um, did you have a favorite committee that you served on? Well, the, the committee in which I was most productive was the uh, 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 Labor Relations Committee, where I was the majority yes. chairman, and, and we uh, 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 it had been a somewhat sleepy committee in the past. It had e either rubber stamped uh, business or labor, depending on which party was in power, mm -hmm. and engaged in very little deliberative process. But I had served on committees like education and, and, and the crime and correction subcommittee I, uh, uh, and, and the consumer affairs committee, mm -hmm. which really conducted in-depth investigations of, of the wisdom of legislation. And so I, I, I was the first to bring that in, in, into the way the state, into the labor relations a added. You know, we, uh, we gave uh, 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 business and labor uh, pl uh, pl uh, plenty of time to testify. W years after I left, one businessman, one business leader complained he had too much time to testify, and you know, he, 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 he hated testifying before our committee. But uh, whatever it was, nobody was shut out. Right. I mean, the, the testimony might have been, we might have had too many committee hearings, but a a everybody got their views across. And I was pleased that as the chairman of the Labor Relations Committee, you know, the, the, the granted subpoenas had uh, it, it become extremely rare. Yeah. And cause, cause it had been abused in, in the past, and certainly the McCarthy era was on people's minds at a federal level where there was massive abuse of subpoena power. Uh, but under my leadership of the, of the Labor Relations Committee, and, you know, we, we got a unanimous vote to, uh, to, uh, uh, to have subpoena power on the workers' compensation system, and uh, 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 Joe Pitts, who later served in Congress, mm -hmm. retiring from Congress uh, 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 this year, strongly advocated for that, and you know we kept the faith. It wasn't a political witch hunt. It, it was a uh, you know it was a sincere effort to find facts, and uh, you know we held hearings and Pitts and. His successor, Joe P J Jeff Bacola, you know, uh, praised me on the House floor for, for the hearings we held. And uh, Matt Ryan, when, when, uh, when he was the Republican leader, used me as a source, as an objective source of information. When other bills came up, he, he, he asked to interrogate me and asked me some questions that you, you, yeah, uh, were, were related to it. Uh, you know, you know, we, ha we had a lot of bipartisan support. We, we revamped the unemployment compensation system. In my first six months, we had labor and business together. Uh, 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 Cliff Jones was a very positive, proactive leader of the Chamber of Commerce, and he, and as a former Republican state chairman, he was appalled that the Democrats had had won legislative seats, attacking the Republicans uh, for their position on cutting unemployment compensation benefits. And, and, and the system was so far out, of, far out of whack that the federal government was threatening 
uh, many millions, actually b billions of dollars in fines against businesses uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, allowing the debt to, to run up. Mm -hmm. So we were able to work out a, a, a compromise between labor and business. Uh, in, in my first six months in office, and later we went on to the minimum wage. We also passed the whistleblower legislation that I, uh, 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 that gave uh, 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 people the right to sue if they were uh, discriminated against as a result of reporting governmental wrongdoing. Okay. Uh, uh, that legislation was not seen as a major piece of legislation at the time, but it, but it has become a major legislation. Yeah, has, be, has become a I'll major. Say. Uh, piece of legislation in uh, over time. Mm -hmm. I, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, uh, when the Philadelphia AFL-CIO, uh, I got tired of hosting Labor Day parades. Uh, as the chairman of the Labor Relations Committee, I joined with some people who disagreed with the AFL-CIO's decision, and they set up the Tri-State Labor Day Committee. I, I spoke at the Tri-State Labor Day Committee celebration. For Labor Day, and eventually, eventually Labor Day was reestablished uh, 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 as a celebrated series of events in Philadelphia. Right. Uh, so, so I, even today, people occasionally ask me, "Are you still chairman of the Labor Relations Committee?" Uh, that uh, that's probably where I had the biggest impact, but uh, the biggest public impact. Right. But but as a Democratic leader uh, for 21 years, you know, I worked. Uh, Quietly but effectively uh, 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 to advance causes I, I, I felt seriously about, I, I, I felt strongly about. I, I supported the expansion of casino gambling in Pennsylvania, but I, you know, but I repeatedly warned uh, my advocates that what generally happens is that, is that the casinos I, I come and make a fortune, and the, and, and, and the legislators who push it go to jail. And, uh, uh, and and I'm pleased to say it turns out that some of the legislators who pushed it did go to jail, but but not for that, right. not for that. Right. And uh, and there was no corruption whatever in the uh, in in the passage of, uh, uh, of of the casino legislation. There's been no corruption at all in the implementation of the casino legislation. And, 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 and we've generated billions of dollars for property taxes, and we've created jobs and j jobs in both construction and work in Pennsylvania. And the, the fact that we've created all these jobs in Pennsylvania is shown by the collapse of the casino industry in New Jersey, which obviously had largely been dependent on Pennsylvanians sure. uh, uh, supporting it. And, and so we've, we've created a whole new source of, ta uh, of tax revenue. In a way that people enjoy, people enjoy paying it because they, uh, uh, they they enjoy gaming, uh, and and, uh, and I, I'm proud that uh, during my tenure in leadership we we were in, we were started out in the majority. We only lost the majority because uh, 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 because Republicans pressured some Democrats to switch, but we we stayed competitive in the in, in the years we were not in the majority. And we regained the majority from 2006 to 2010, mm -hmm. and, and so I, 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 I'm very proud that you know we were we forced them to take us very seriously uh, uh, throughout my 21 years in, in, in leadership. We had a, we had a daily impact on on the running of the house, and we uh, we under uh, when Rendell was governor, and we had Obama's stimulus. We had record amounts of money going to schools in, in Pennsylvania and in Philadelphia. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm very proud of my record and, and, and the record of the other Democrats during the 21 years I was in leadership. Um, being in leadership that long, do you, does being in leadership affect the way you offer legislation or your constituent services. Well, one thing it does is it <clears throat> is it uh, is it forces a more collegial uh, 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 culture in terms of sharing good ideas. Okay. And, and it and it, 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 it and it creates 
sometimes perception that the leaders aren't doing anything right. because other people are introducing the bills and they're not. Uh, so one reason I got involved in, in medical marijuana is because you know there was no such thing as a freshman in a swing district who wanted to introduce the legislation. Uh, it was considered controversial and politically dangerous. I, uh, uh, but I, I, think, I think being in leadership gives you a statewide perspective. If you, if you really engage with, the, with all the individual members and you show up in caucuses and you, and you meet with the members other, uh, other times, mm -hmm. and I, I think that uh, I, I think the leadership team that, uh, that I was part of had a greater statewide perspective than, than either, either of the current Republican or, 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 uh, or Democratic leadership teams, I think. I, th I think the legislature has become too streamlined and uh, uh, too interested in processing legislation and, and not enough interested in, uh, in, in passing the best possible legislation. Out of all the bills that you had introduced that became law or the amendments that you had um, introduced that helped bills become enacted, what would you say is the one that you're most proud? Well, I, I'm, I'm proud of different things for di bills for, for different reasons. Okay. You know, I, I'm proud of medical marijuana be, uh, because that was the one that required the, the greatest sales effort. It was just considered bizarre and you know totally off the charts when it was first introduced. I and I you know but it, but it had a constituency. There were real there were real people. One thing I had established from the basis of talking to people and doing research on it was there were real people in yes. Pennsylvania and other places who, who who needed marijuana that the that the uh, other that the legal drugs. That were available were more dangerous than marijuana, and they were and they were less effective. And that, that that didn't mean that anybody could just go smoke a joint and that was better than uh, than a doctor's prescription. But it meant that doctors ought to have the right to prescribe ma marijuana sure. if they if they felt, and doctors ought to because they had the right ought to, ought to study up on uh, on what marijuana could can do and what doses were appropriate. And there ought to be research done on these questions, uh, and uh, you know, so, so, so I'm proud. Of, and I met with loads of loads of people, urging them to contact the legislators. And the legislator was predominantly Republican, and and there was, you know, a whole lot of belief. These guys, it won't mean anything. You talk to them, it won't mean anything. And and Mike Terzai and uh, uh, Dave Reed would be very proud of my defense of the Republicans. They said, look. They're, they, are, they are elected by the people. They have to represent the people. If you, can persu if you talk to them, you can persuade them. And there was no, at that time, there had been no state in the country had passed a medical marijuana bill through a Republican state legislator. Mm -hmm. And today, Pennsylvania is one of only two states that's passed a medical marijuana bill with a Republican legislature. And our bill is much stronger than the other state. Virginia is the other state. Uh, Virginia is, is, is a very limited bill, uh, or a series of bills. Uh, uh, so so, so, so I, I'm proud of the, the, the strategy I pushed, uh, is just not, which is not brilliant or tremendously original, but was very difficult with people who were very mad at the system, very alienated. Sure. And you know, didn't have a, they didn't they didn't have PACs, they didn't have you know, they didn't have statewide associations with paid lobbyists, mm -hmm. but uh, they were able to uh, uh, to persuade the Republican majority, in first the Senate and then the House, that, uh, that they really needed this bill and that they were respectable, good people. And uh, you know, and I and I had numerous meetings with them and and pushed and strongly encouraged what they did. I spoke at numerous. Public forums, and you know, we, we all helped uh, raise the support for this from 82 percent when we first adopted, when we were first introduced, and people couldn't believe it was that high, to finally 92 percent when it finally passed. We, we were relentless in public advocacy, and uh, 
and so I, and I'm proud of that for uh, uh, because it seems so far off the charts and really wasn't. And, uh, and I, I'm proud of introducing the legislation for uh, 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 for district offices because I think it fundamentally changed the way the House operates and, and fundamentally changed it for the better. It, it, it certainly enabled and increased the chances of passing minimum wage legislation because legislators were much more attuned to the problems of, uh, of, of their constituents right. and, and in many cases more attuned to low-income constituents because low-income constituents were the ones most likely uh, uh, to contact them. Uh, and, and, and I'm proud of the uh, of the uh, legislation uh, for, on organ transplants, yes. which was really obvious, which had no strong objection to it. It, it, it wasn't all, all off the charts, but it had nobody really pushing it, okay. except Senator, Senator DeWitt in the Senate and the Republicans were wrongly just ignoring him for, for partisan reasons. And, and we took, you know, you know, we took what was an excellent idea and commonsensical, and you know, the, the, there were some religious objections to organ transplantation, okay. but th th there were very minor objections. You know, you, one can find one, one, one can find scholars or sages in just about any religion who who had written something which could be interpreted. To be critical of organ transplantation, but it wasn't. It wasn't a core issue of any religion op 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 opposing it. But there were, there were just cautionary uh, 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 remarks by respected religious figures uh, 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 dealing with this. But this was before it was technically feasible to, to do it. Uh, so uh, so I, I, and, and I'm proud of the minimum wage. Issue because I discovered that uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the states had done this before it became a federal government, and I trumpeted that discovery everywhere in, I could in Pennsylvania and at the National Conference of State Legislatures, and I had meetings with a national guy, a national staff member John Zaleski, mm -hmm. whose portfolio included uh, statewide legislative efforts. And uh, we really created, a, out of the effort to pass the minimum wage, we created a national labor caucus of state legislators, uh, which was very active for, for decades. I probably still is active yeah. uh, uh, be, uh, uh, at the National Conference of State Legislatures. I got an award from the National Conference of State Legislators for creating a new organization and thus attracting more people to the, or to the organization. Uh, before I was pushing the minimum wage, we didn't have any labor people showing up at NCSL events, and now we've got now we've got scores or, or sometimes over 100 oh my. labor people showing up at NCSL. Is it, and, and the strategy of passing the minimum wage state by state, mm -hmm. which is now institutionalized everywhere, that was originally my idea. And uh, so, uh, for various reasons, I, uh, you know, those, uh, uh, those are bills I'm particularly proud of. Okay, thank you. Um, over the years, there was discussion of reducing the size of the legislature, and you were pretty vocal about not yeah. wanting that to happen. Yeah, and, and, and we'll see what uh, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see uh, what, uh, what the legislature does now. Uh, uh, both houses have passed. That legislation in this session. Right. I, I have little doubt if the voters are given a chance to let's throw politicians out of work, they'll vote for that. But I, uh, uh, but I think that would be a gut emotional response. Okay. It, it doesn't deal with their real needs. Uh, I, I took a, I commissioned a telephone public opinion poll statewide to get a better understanding of public feeling on this question. And. Uh, uh, large numbers of people don't want district office services to be cut. Large numbers of people favor hiring additional staff people if we're going to if we're going to eliminate all these legislators. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I, I don't think there's go I think there's going to be a lot of pressure for increasing legislative staff. I don't think 
I, I don't think much money, if any money, is saved. At most, uh, you, uh, you save less than the cost of a single high school. Pennsylvania, we've got a thousand high schools in, in, in Pennsylvania, and this would be less than the cost of abolishing the, uh, the, uh, the vast majority of them. Uh, six to eight million dollars seems to be the, uh, the, uh, the most common estimate of what would be saved. I, you know, it, it would be symbolic. Uh, Daryl Metcalf, uh, my Republican counterpart, says, well, it would be symbolic of our, uh, of our willingness to sacrifice. But we're not sacrificing ourselves. You know, the people who are thrown out of jobs will often go on pensions, and we're paying, you know, we've, uh, we pay for pension dollars. Uh, I, we, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I think the cost of sa the cost savings here are minimal. Uh, the va there's a, there's great value in, in the odd life we lead, split between the capital and uh, and our districts. I, th I think it creates a cross fertilization of ideas, and, and, it, and it creates real local advocacy. And you know the local you, you can redraw it. You can cut the legislature. In, in, into as few as three districts, we could have, we could make the legislature like we really want to save money. We can make the legislature like the county commissioners, and one legislator for western Pennsylvania, one legislator for eastern Pennsylvania, one for central Pennsylvania, and uh, they, uh, uh, that would save a lot of money. But you, you know, you, uh, but the whole legislative budget is, is only one percent of the state budget. And legislative salaries and expenses are only one percent of the legislative budget. So you know, you're, you're really not talking about any big savings. What you're, what you're talking about is is reducing contact between legislators and uh, and constituents, and it, you know it doesn't affect me personally anymore. It, my job will not be affected. Sure. I yeah. Uh, uh, the guy who beat me in the primary, his job will be affected. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, but you know, I, I, I'm against it. I don't think it's in the public interest to uh, to get rid of it. And you know, I have no idea if it comes on the ballot uh, or when it will come on the ballot. Uh, uh, but if it did come on the ballot, and if I was eligible to organize it, to try to organize a statewide campaign against it. I, I would intend to do that. Okay. And I say eligible because I'm considering running for judge of the uh, of the Court of Common Pleas. And if I'm a judge, I'm you know, not allowed to participate in politics. But I, you know, you know if if it came up at a time uh, before I became judge, or if I didn't become judge, I, you know, and I, and I was eligible to participate in politics, I, 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 I would be very interested in organizing. A statewide campaign against it. It's against the interests of the average citizen, and and, and, and it should not pass. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, you also worked for for many years on limiting limiting uh, lobbying within the House. Um, is a little lobbying a good thing, or were you interested in just getting rid of um, all lobby groups? Well, no. We, we have no constitutional right. To uh, uh, to stop people from lobbying, mm -hmm. uh, uh, their the rights are guaranteed by the First Amendment. Uh, what I am interested in doing is is uh, is limiting contributions. Okay. You know, uh, you know, I I got a twenty-five thousand dollar contribution from uh, from a cousin of mine. I you know. Um, uh, my opponent uh, got got contributions of thirty-two thousand dollars from one union and thirty thousand dollars from another union. I, I, you know, where that money actually came from, I don't know. I, you know, I, you know how the money wound up in that union, in those union packs, I don't know. But uh, you, know, you know, the idea that three people in a three Institution, one person, and, uh, and I think he got a twenty-five thousand dollar contribution, uh, as I did, that matched my cousin's twenty-five thousand dollar right. contribution, an individual. So 
So I, I think I, I think it will be much better to uh, have, have much lower contributions and to not and to not just have this become an auction. You know, we can't legitimately do things to justify the expense of, uh, of the money that people are, are spending, and and, and, that e and that either we we follow the law and ethical principles, and the people get nothing, or virtually nothing, as a result of their contributions, mm -hmm. or else we're going to have a whole lot of angry people around who contribute a lot and and feel and, and feel betrayed. Sure. The, the, the big contribution didn't mean anything. I've, I've long favored uh, uh, restricting contributions. You know, I would think if we have to start somewhere, the federal uh, uh, provision of two thousand uh, 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 dollars uh, per person would be reasonable. Okay. Five thousand dollars for political action committee would be reasonable. I th I think we do better w when we represent people and less well when we represent money. You know, there obviously are public spirited individuals around. There, there obviously are, are uh, public spirited uh, uh, political action committees around. But I, I, I think it would be better if, if, if we would rely on a broader base and we not try to uh, 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 try to have uh, various interest groups uh, 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 seeking right, right, and their perceptions might be right, their perceptions might be wrong, they're, they're controlling a legislative seat, but, uh, but there shouldn't be the appearance of that or the reality of that. Over the last 40 years, there's been a number of technological advances specifically within the House and state government in general. Um, on the House floor, you, there's the laptops, there's the, the House video stream, right. um, social media, email, everything like that. Right. Do you see technology as, uh, on all these changes as a good thing um, for well, constituent well, services? Well, there, there certainly are good elements of it, okay. but there's also uh, uh, misleading elements of it, too. I mean, we... Uh, you know, it's, it was, you know, I, I, I supported us televising the sessions. Mm -hmm. you know, we, well, we had televised it in the 77, 78 session, and then, and, then, and then that was dropped, and then we started televising it again in 93, 94, and we've, and we've continued to do it. I mean, the existence of the televised sessions uh, created in some people's minds a view that the sessions should be conducted during normal business hours, and uh, you know they certainly should not be conducted after people have gone to bed. So you know, so that basically meant that we have less time to deliberate over legislation, okay. and uh, that uh, uh, that meant that, uh, it, you know, there's less serious consideration of legislation than, uh, than there used to be. Uh, so I, I, I see that as a negative of, uh, yeah, uh, 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 of television coverage. Social media coverage is, is both good and bad. I got the, I, 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 you know, a, a newspaper reporter asked me, uh, a newspaper reporter and, and, a, and a bartender uh, uh, that I knew, uh, I, I, and the bartender I knew through social media both asked me about introducing medical marijuana mm -hmm. legislation. And, uh, and so, you know, using social media, I conducted my own poll. What do you think about introducing medical marijuana legislation? And the pe people were my Facebook friends, so I knew where they stood generally on issues. And you know, it, it showed its support among a wide variety of people all over the ideological spectrum. Right, and that was useful. It confirmed it confirmed public opinion polls showing this was very broadly. And uh, you know, so, uh, so, so that was helpful to me, and it's 
and it's very satisfying when you issue a statement on social media and you get 10 responses to it, that's a lot better. You get 10 responses in two hours. It's a lot better than having an article appear in the newspaper and over the next 10 years you get zero or one response. I, uh, so uh, it, it has advantage, it has advantages, but it may also create expectations of, 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 immediate, of immediate action that, you know, you know, that, are, that are not real, realistic. You can convince me of the idea, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean you're going to quickly convince the legislature as a whole of an idea. Right. Uh, so, uh, and then people get disillusioned uh, uh, very quickly, and uh, and then that makes it difficult to pass. And there's, you know, some some legislation just takes many years to pass. I'm the main sponsor uh, of legislation creating drivers license, restoring drivers licenses to undocumented residents <coughs> of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was the law for many years until it, until somebody. Paid, paid attention to it and said, hey, this isn't right that undocumented people in Pennsylvania can get, can get driver's licenses. But uh, uh, you know, you know, the, our, our immigration laws are, all, are, are inherently arbitrary, uh, they're, uh, they're messy, and uh, you know, you, you families where some people are here legally, some people are here illegally, some people are here, and it's uncertain whether they're uh, here legally or not. You know, the main advocate in my district for helping illegal uh, 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 undocumented people become citizens eventually got the necessary documents herself and it took mm -hmm. it took a lot of work but uh, she uh, she's she's on a path to citizenship she's going to become a citizen in in, in, in a year or two mm -hmm. she's now documented and, the, you know, and I, so you know, so it's possible. So people, there are a lot of people with this borderline status, right? Uh, uh, and it's not everybody ought to, ought to get their documents in order. You know, people ought not to enter the country illegally, but yeah, you know, sometimes people enter it for one legitimate purpose, like going to college, and you know, they find degrees take longer to earn than, than they thought. Or, or they come because they're engaged mm -hmm. to someone. If they're engaged and, 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 they, and they get married, then, then it's okay that they're citizens. But if they break up, then, they, uh, uh, then they're here illegally. Yeah. I, 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 so, you know, so, so some people engage in paper marriages. Um, um, but uh, you know, but other people say no, we're not going to do that. So then they're here illegally. <laughs> uh, it, it, it'll take a long time to work out a societal consensus sure. on that issue. But people should. The point is, people shouldn't be discouraged. They ought to. They, uh, they ought to plow ahead and right. advocate and, and negotiate. You know, uh, one uh, uh, one organizer said, "We're engaged in negotiations, and we're not going to give an inch." Well, you know, that's not the way it works. You know, if you're engaged <laughs> in negotiations and you, and you want people on the opposite side to actually do, something, exactly. do what you want yeah. them to, you're going to have to give up something. Right. In 2016, you were officially recognized as the longest serving representative in, in PA House history. Yes. Did you think you would serve that long? When I started, no. no. <laughs> I, I assumed I would serve about uh, maybe 19 years, because that was my that was how long my opponent served before he was elected as judge. Uh, yeah, and I, I was willing to serve shorter if elected to Congress, but, but I, I never gained the support to do that. I, I, uh, you know, I, I had no idea I would I would set a longevity record uh, uh, until shortly before. Yeah. Uh, 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 before I did, and uh, you know, I thought Dwight Evans would pass whatever record I set because uh, Dwight worked his district tremendously hard, and then had a good record of achievement for his district. But he got elected to Congress, so my record is safe from him. Uh, I, I expect Tom <laughs> Calderon though uh, uh, will beat it. He's uh, 
uh, uh, he's uh, 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 two and a half years behind me. He, 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 uh, he was elected unopposed for this term, so at the end of this term, he'll be six months behind me. You know, he says, well, I, I don't know if I'll run again, but my guess is he'll run again and <laughs> break the record. This will be fine. What kind of changes did you see over the last 40 years, whether they were good or bad in the House? Well, it, as I've said before, the, uh, uh, there's less collegiality than there used to be. Okay. There's less intensity in legislative deliberations than there used to be. There's more focusing on processing legislation and, and, and less focusing on, on uh, the merits of the legislation and societal problems. Uh, uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's a need for uh, uh, other, uh, others a need, I think, for more energy, more effort, and uh, g a greater creativity and bipartisanship in, mm -hmm. in solving problems. It, it, it ought not to be as hard as it now is to, uh, uh, to get people uh, 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 to, uh, uh, to agree uh, on legislation across party lines, across ideological lines. Because ultimately, we're all not just partisan caricatures. We're, uh, we're not ideological caricatures. We're individual people, mm -hmm. and and we have and we share in common that we represent our citizens, and and so sometimes there's a difference. Uh, are there are major differences uh, between districts, but there's a huge threat of commonality among the different districts, and if. If something is popular in one district, there's a pretty good chance it's popular in many other districts. And uh, the question is, do people have moral objections or political objections or cost objectives to, uh, uh, to proposals? Or are people just saying, well, if the Democrats are for it, it can't be any good? Mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and there's too much of that. It, it, it's too hard, or, or sometimes the Senate says, well, if the House is for it, it can't be any good. If the House says, well, if the Senate's for it, it can't be any good. And, you know, uh, it, 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 as partisan tensions have risen over the years, so has so have tensions between the House and the Senate. Sure. And, uh, you know, one of my staff members says, well, everybody's in favor of reforms, but they're all in favor of different reforms, so we can't get any agreement. Yeah. On, on, on things. Uh, so, and then there's more, more tension between the governor and, and the legislature than there used to be. And there's more tension between, between the press and the legislature yeah. uh, 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 than there used to be. Uh, the gridiron dinner is a uh, old relic of uh, satire uh, of, of the legislative process. and. Uh, you know, I, I participate in it only in recent years uh, uh, to get legislative participation. Mm -hmm. uh, have they allowed legislators uh, uh, to speak? So I, I, I've represented the House in, in, in the last two sessions. I was the first to represent the House oh, wow. in, in the history of the Gridiron Dinner, the, the other caucuses. I was first to represent the House Democrats, rather. Okay. Mike Verrup had, had previously represented the House Republicans. And right. They had Leach had represented Senate Democrats. And, uh, I, and I, forget, I forget who represented Senate Republicans. But, but uh, they, but, uh, but, uh, but even the tone of that is nastier than hmm. uh, uh, it used to be, and the attendance is, and the attendance is much less than it used to be. Uh, and you know, we have to move to restore a sense of commonality and common purpose. And you know, obviously, there's some of that exists now. If not, if it existed, we can do anything together. And uh, we're and and we're better off than, than the Supreme Court was at, at its low point, where one legislator was, or one Supreme Court justice was, was accused of driving recklessly and trying to kill another Supreme Court justice, yes. uh, 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 that, was a, uh, uh, that was a real 
a judicial low point and a breakdown of collegiality. But uh, you know, that, uh, the House is just less, less collegial than it's, than it's been. And Speaker Terzai, in his role as Speaker, has, has worked to, to try to improve collegiality. And speakers generally have tried, uh, have tried to improve collegiality, but, but what's needed is a uh, greater effort uh, on the part of the members. And one way you create collegiality is by engagement, in, by engaging in the legislative process. We hold a committee hearing in, in, in some town somewhere. You know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a group activity, and uh, you know, you know people, people get a chance to know each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 when you hold a, uh, when you have long sessions, people have a chance to talk to each other, not only the formal discussion that occurs on the floor, but uh, informal discussions that occur as the, as the debate drags on. But if, ever, ever, if, if the vast majority of debates are cut and dry and there's a bipartisan consensus, we want to get out of here as quickly as possible. And, uh, and, and of course, we can't. You know, we can't meet after five o'clock except right. under extraordinary circumstances, and, you know, and we can't meet, and we don't want to meet during the summer, except under extraordinary circumstances. We don't want to meet in November after the elections, except in extraordinary circumstances. The cumulative effect of this is that is that there's less interaction than there is before. You know, people are less likely to go out to dinner right. with somebody they don't know than it's somebody they do know. From uh, from participation in the legislative process, and uh, 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 and, and 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 the political campaigns now become much more specialized. Uh, 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 over time, so it used to be that you know legislators would go and campaign for each other, but now you know, that's considered you know meaningless, and you know it's just just about raising money and. You know, and running and running TV ads or having high, having expensive mailings. Uh, there's just less and less opportunities. There's just less and less institutional opportunities for collegiality than there used to be. It sounds like, in your opinion, there's been more negative changes over the last 40 years in the House. Um, any positive ones that that you can mention? Um, well, I, I think that on the whole, we we have, with the conspicuous exception of of, of, of helping the poor, we, we have moved to enhance the dignity of uh, of people uh, across the board. Uh, when I was uh, first elected, I, I, I got to serve on a committee to investigate the problems of victims of rape. And, and we learned that uh, uh, for a woman to claim rape, uh, she had to be of, of what was considered upstanding moral character, which meant that she never had sex with anybody she was not married to. And if she was not a virgin, then her testimony lacked credibility mm -hmm. and was pretty, it was pretty much ignored. And he, no matter how outrageous the circumstances, the guy she never met climbs through the window and, uh, and, and, and rapes her. And she had sex two years ago with a boyfriend. And they said, well, I, sorry, we can't believe your testimony because uh, uh, you made love to your boyfriend two years ago. I mean, that's ridiculous. And, 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 and we changed the law. You know, sexual abuse had been very common. And it was just something that people accepted as a fact of life. And uh, our suspicion of welfare recipients uh, ha had a good effect in that we we uh, enabled welfare caseworkers to protect children in case of sexual abuse, enabled children enabled them to receive complaints about sexual abuse, enabled them to act to remove children from households with sexual abuse. And some people say, "Well, you're granting welfare." Recipients' rights that uh, other people don't have. Mm -hmm. Isn't this unfair? I said, no, nobody, nobody is uh, being treated poorly. And gradually, we expanded, you know, our, our protections of sexual abuse uh, victims all across the board. 
but the, uh, the whole scandals in various churches about, about sexual abuse have to be understood, should be understood, about being part of a general societal toleration mm -hmm. of, uh, of sexual abuse. And we've changed that here, and you know, you know, I'm proud of that. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, we, you know, by expanding benefit programs for senior citizens, uh, by expanding health care for senior citizens, you know, we, we've shown we value senior citizens. Yeah. We spend more money on senior citizens programs per capita than any other state. I, uh, we, uh, you know, uh, we have an excellent system of, uh, of college education. We've enormously expanded I, I, I college educational opportunities, professional opportunities in the Commonwealth. You know, I, I, I'm unhappy that this has basically been paid for by the students themselves, yeah. and, and, and that kid, kids have enormous debt uh, when they graduate. But, but, but still, it's, it, it's better having kids graduating from college with debt than not having them graduate from college at all. Uh, we, in, we, we, uh, we've expanded. Uh, 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 gaming in in Pennsylvania, we uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, we built up our roads in in, in Pennsylvania. We should have shown responsiveness to motorists. You know, we uh, we've shown responsiveness to crime victims. Mm -hmm. We brought victims' rights in, into in, in, into Pennsylvania law when I was elected. Uh, the only rights victims had was under extremely rare circumstances. They could ex they, they could accept compensation. Okay. They, they could get compensation for uh, for uh, uh, for certain limited damages that were done to them. We've given them rights now to uh, 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 to testify at trials and to and, and to follow up on uh, on, uh, on sentencing and to follow up on probation and parole. That they did not have before. Uh, so you, you look across the board. You know, we've, as we discussed, we've had marriage equality for same-sex couples. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we have funded uh, women's shelters. Women's shelters happened to be invented the year I was first elected to uh, the legislature. The first women's shelter was in Pittsburgh. Right, uh, I think, roughly two months before my election. Mm -hmm. We've institutionalized it in Pennsylvania. And we've got women's shelters all, all, all across the state to protect women from spousal abuse or, or, or boyfriend abuse or stranger abuse. Uh, you, know, you, you look all, all, all across the board. We, uh, we've done things that expand human dignity. And uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm proud of the results. Yeah. Of the legislature, and I, th I, I think a more collegial uh, a, a legislature uh, uh, could do more in the future uh, to benefit Pennsylvanians of all sections of the state. Good. Over the last 40 years, I'm sure you have some fond memories of of life in the House. Um, any specific stories you'd like to share? I. Uh, uh, well, my election to the, to the House leadership in uh, in uh, 1990 was it was an upset. Uh, 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 people were generally surprised that I won. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, that was a, a, a personal. I was the third Philadelphian to be in leadership at the time, and right now there's only one Philadelphian. People said. They'll never elect three Philadelphians at the same time in leadership, but uh, uh, but, they, but they elected me because of my involvement uh, in the, in the in the legislative process. Mm -hmm. I uh, 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 that was a, a very fond memory. I and I, and I was reelected uh, to the leadership post ten, ten other times. Yeah. I. Uh, memories I have, you know, I, I learned early that you know that nobody knows everything around here. You know, I was assigned originally. You know, uh, uh, the Speaker of the House assigned me. Now each party determines its own seating. 
uh, uh, but at the time, I, I was elected the Republican speaker determined the proceeding. He wanted that power by himself. So he assigned me to sit in back of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the Democratic leader, uh, which, was, which was where my predecessor had been here 19 years and sat. Okay. And uh, uh, so I, 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 I got to talk to Herbert Feynman and Lee Rivers, who's the whip, the, the, the whip extensively as a result of that. And uh, you know, Feynman was a phenomenal master of, uh, of, of the legislative process. He studied each bill with tremendous detail. He was a walking encyclopedia of legislation and you know, had a degree of mastery. Of, of the details and politics of the legislative process, I, I don't think anybody has matched since. Uh, and uh, but one day, uh, but in the back, but I, I got hungry during. We had these long debates that went on uh, uh, for a long time. And 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 one day, I discovered soup. <laughs> there was soup in the back, and I was told they just recently put the soup in. And so I discovered. And then and then for months, I would walk back and forth and get soup during the day. <laughs> And then Feynman notices this. Finally, after about, I've been doing this for about three months, it's near the end of sessions. Where are you getting the soup? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said it's in the back, Herb. Right? <laughs> I told him. I, I told him. Where it, it just showed me that you know that was one detail that had passed him. That right. The, that he can get soup on the, <laughs> in the back of the house. And. and uh, Uh, you know, I, 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 I have fond memories of attempts of, of young legislators to get together sure. and talk, engage in, uh, in, 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 engage in social activities uh, uh, together. I, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of, uh, of, of one-liners or anecdotes and uh, good, an uh, good anecdotes and. Uh, I'm sure, there are too many. I ca I ca I coming up blank. I maybe that <coughs> can be a subject of some other interview. There I think you go. We time. could do that. But, uh, time to think about it. Um, uh, uh, but. Uh, 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 the, uh, there's an awful lot of uh, of good times. I was not one of the, those people who are, you know. There's a norm in, coll in collegiality of well, you, you, you know, you just pat each other on the back and you have a have a have a have a, have a good debate, and then everybody goes out to dinner together. I I, I I have to say I took the issues more seriously than that. Okay. And, and you know, if I felt strongly about an issue, and you know, you know about, and people were doing things that harmed my constituents or you know, considerable numbers of other Pennsylvanians, mm -hmm. I, I really didn't feel like let's go out to dinner and stuff. I, I just felt that there was a uh, uh, norm here that was uh, of, of civility, the decency that was being crossed. Uh, I, I know with uh, Dick Thornburg. I, uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I co-sponsored some bills that became law. I declined to go to bill signing ceremonies. It was a quiet, it was a quiet protest uh, against him. I wrote to him to protest his, his his efforts to lead welfare cuts, and I saw him a few years ago, and you know we we had something honoring former governor. So I went up to shake his hand. He was re he was angry at me for protesting his welfare cuts. <laughs> Decades had gone by. Still now, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, but he was like, other people cut them more. But yeah, yeah, see, I'm vindicated. Well, yeah, you know, I, 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 I you know, I know the people who, uh, who, uh, who were hurt by it, and you know, I, I don't think he's vindicated by the fact that other people, all, uh, 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 cut them more. I. Uh, Regrets I have, I, I, I guess, are opportunities to talk to people that I did not follow up on. You know, Ray Schaefer, uh, who, appoint, who had appointed me to the 
uh, Youth Advisory Committee uh, uh, sent me a le letter when he briefly became, he, he accepted an interim position as head of Allegheny University and he, and, and he sent us all in the legislature a, uh, a, 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 a list of things we can do to help Allegheny University and I should have, uh, yeah, I, I should have responded and talked to him because he was a very good governor. Right. In, in many ways, he was the last really progressive Republican governor that we had. He was literally a Rockefeller Republican. He nominated Nelson Rockefeller mm. for president of the Republican National Convention. So, you know, I, I, I regret not following up on his on, on, on his letter and talking to him. I, you know, I. Uh, but I, uh, I, I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I, each individual achievement was was, uh, was very satisfying. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, when it occurred, uh, 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 leadership victories. Oh yes. Uh, were satisfying. Uh, individual legislation was worthwhile that I had little or nothing to do with it, mm -hmm. you know, but I, but I could identify with. Uh, 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 that was uh, very satisfying. Sure. I, uh, I tried hard not to personalize things, and, you know, I was uh, not the most outgoing legislator. No, I, 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 I did not take opposition personally. I got frustrated uh, at some positions people took at some times. But when I was in leadership, I felt our duty was to represent the caucus as a whole sure. and not just to uh, represent the, the people who voted for us. And uh, you know, I, I didn't give people the third degree as to whether they, whether they had voted for me or not in the leadership elections. You know, I, try, I, 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 I tried very hard to uh, uh, to, uh, to help people all, all over the state, whether my district uh, uh, particularly benefited or not. Uh, I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I hope that uh, that would be reciprocated mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, on, on concerns I and my constituents had, and to some degree it was. Uh, I uh, I think we need a, st a, 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 a statewide focus and, and a greater confidence in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the Democratic Party and a greater willingness to uh, uh, to engage uh, with, uh, uh, with people outside our our, our districts. I, I think the Democratic Party stands for important statewide principles. As does the Republican Party, I've, sure. I've, I've, I've encouraged my uh, counterpart on the State Government Committee, Darrell Metcalf, to uh, to come to Philadelphia more often and to and to engage with people. I mean, he may find I tell him he may find people who agree with him. You know, I, 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 I would hope he would listen to people and maybe uh, may, maybe understand Philadelphia a little bit better. I. You know, I, I favor greater dialogue, and in, in, in less being, people being less offended, and, and uh, uh, being willing to uh, 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 being willing to hear, hear what other people have to say, and uh, 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 really work together and see see ourselves as Pennsylvanians. I think I think we need a stronger identity of, as Pennsylvanians than we now have. Okay. How would you like your tenure as a state representative to be remembered? I I I'd like to be remembered as somebody who tried hard to get results to, to benefit Pennsylvania, and and, and who and who succeeded in uh, improving many lives and and, in, and succeeded. And improving the dignity with which people are treated. Nice. I have one last question for you. What advice would you give to someone interested in running for public office? I, I would advise such a person to participate in political campaigns, 
to be active in, to be active in the community, to pay attention to issues, and to try to figure out in advance some of the things the person would like to do if elected. All too many people run for office without the slightest clue as to what as, as to what they want to do, and when they win. Uh, 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 they have to figure it out. If they, yeah. if they figure it out before, they could, uh, they could get some public input into 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 what they're going to do, and they could proceed with a greater degree of confidence if they've shared their views with their constituents in advance. Representative Mark Cohen, I want to thank you very much for being with us today and answering some of our questions, and I wish you nothing but good luck in the future. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.